Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, I want to welcome you to this session on trauma and focus on polytrauma. Uh, I know that there are people coming from the plenary lecture and, and uh, I think we will anyway get started soon. There has been a late change of, of moderator. We will uh, moderate this session together. My name is Michael Muller from, from Göteborg, from this city, working with trauma and my colleague, uh, Dr. Savakati from Iran, will take over the moderatorship from Mr. Hamdan that will give his, his talk. He's the first presenter, but he will be replaced as a moderator because he has other duties during the meeting. So um, we will run each presentation, and then we gave some free time for questions and, and comments afterwards, and we carry on so. So I hope we will have a a nice time. We have one and a half hour for these eight presentations. So please, first presenter. Uh, Sir Chairman, dear audience, it is a pleasure and honor to be with you today, telling you a very bitter experience which we have collected by war injuries. And this is the great Jesus saying, peace on the earth. But I'm afraid there is no peace on this earth. It's not changing. Could you speak louder, please? Yeah. Oh, not here. No, so here. Yeah. Okay. And this is a good example of multiple injuries. He is still alive because it is a high velocity on detonation, but it is low on impact. So that's why the missile did not penetrate in the depth of the body. This is the injurious agent, dominantly it was shell, comes then bullet, mines, and don't forget road traffic accident and fall because they drive at night through a very unpaved road. And we have to remember the associated, the closed injury. So in war injury, it's not only the open injury, but it is the associated closed injury. And that's, and you see that 65% of the war injuries related to limbs, and hence the importance of the orthopedic surgeon. Lesions, compound fracture comes on the top of the list, and then amputation, and then soft tissue injury, closed fracture, and dislocation. I do remember one patient with missile injuries. He lost his ankle, and we were very pleased to rush to treat his ankle 
But the anesthetist discovered that he had a close dislocation of his shoulder, which we miss it. Triage and evacuation, I would say, comes on the top of everything. I'm sure no, no one of you can believe that we received 1,800 patients within hours. So you can imagine how fast you should go to treat 1,800 patients. And here we are, I would say we can classify them into the wandering casualties, those with minor injury who can wander around, who can look after themselves. And then the fatally injured, in which you feel nothing can be done. Whatever you do, they are going to die. And then the seriously injured, those whom you have to constrain because you can take them out back to normal life. Again, we have the problem of delay in arrival to the hospital, which is very, very significant. 85% arrive within six hours, and 10% arrive within 12 hours, and 9% arrive after 12 hours, and the incidence of food infection is directly related to the delay in arrival. A very common problem is the diagnostic failure, and it is expected very much expected as far as you have a heavy casualty, you may miss a lot of lesions. And this is an article which I have published in the injury in 1987. We did analysis of the missed injury and the diagnostic failure was 2% and the cases was 460. Either single lesion was missed or even more than one lesion was missed in one patient. But the answer why? The lesion were missed. Is it clinical? The answer is yes. Lack of experience, error, or even no explanation. Radiological, not done. No proper X-ray was done. Inaccurate X-ray, misinterpreted or even ignored. And of course, on the top of everything is admission towards with different specialty. So for example, when the patient got had a laparotomy, we don't expect the general surgeon to look for injury of the radial nerve or common peroneal nerve. He will look for what is related to his surgery. Operative management is on the top of everything, but it is a good balance or a critical balance between unreasonable haste and unacceptable, unacceptable delay. Then you have to have the patient in the right place, in the right time, and in the right hand. Examination on the table before and after recovery from anesthesia is very useful. I would call it the last minutes examination. Then, of course, localization and positioning. The operative technique should be well understood. We have to go through anatomical closure if, if possible, and we have to avoid procrastination. No procrastination, if anything to be perfectly accomplished. It must be independent of thoughts. Wound excision, I would say it is the cornerstone of treating war wounded. It is everything. And it should be generous, adequate, and aggressive. And it is the cornerstone for ideal treatment should be done as soon as possible. Every corner and pockets in the field should be explored. You'll see a lot of strange form bodies because of the negative pressure that sex, dirt, clothes, and everything to the inside of the body. That's what you call the cavitational effect. All form bodies, extrinsic or intrinsic, should be removed. Mobile bone should be fixed. Better to avoid tourniquet, cautery, hematoma, and dead space. And always better to close the wound very soon, either by delayed primary closure or primary closure or skin graft. We have done a primary closure, which is against the standard treatment. And I'm here to say there is a place for a primary closure in war wounded, though this is not written in books. And then, of course, remember the staged conventional debridement. You debrid today, tomorrow, and after tomorrow, till you end up with a healthy bleeding tissue. 
handling retained missile, the ideal time for removal is at the initial wound oxygen. Delayed removal needs a good reason. Intraarticular, intrathecal metallic form body should be removed. Lead toxication is written in books. We have seen thousands, thousands of four wounded, and only one case of what we call it a toxic neuropathy. So I think it is magnified. We have seen three cases of malignancy at the site of a retained missile. And again, this is statistically insignificant. But the interesting thing is the migrating missile or missile embol. I remember a very interesting case. A gentleman presented with a compound fracture of the humerus and pneumothorax. We treat the compound fracture and the chest surgeon insert a chest tube. And we did not look because of the heavy casualty, where is the bullet or the missile? Within 48 hours, he starts showing gangrene of the big toe of the left lower limb. Then we took X-ray and the bullet was inside the femoral artery. How do you explain this? The only explanation is that the bullet hits the dorsal aorta and the dorsal aorta close over the puncture and the bullet descend down to the femoral artery. So remember the risk. Okay, infection is a real disaster. And I'm sorry to say we have a high incidence of infection. Always related to insufficient or delayed wound oxygen rather than to the dose of and type of antibiotics. Remember, return form body or other underlying cause. Remember the subclinical infection. The secret remains in the proper selection and dissection. And surgeon is never blameless for infection. Peripheral nerve injury is a common site of missing. Frequently, the peripheral nerve is being missed because it is perilous. Patient will not tell you about so primary or secondary compartmental compression should be considered. Transaction of the nerve. Neuropraxia wait up to three months. And remember, bizarre recovery is highly suggestive of neuropraxia. They show the recovery distal to proximal rather than proximal to distal. Hoffman tunnel sign is a reliable guide of recovery. Fracture with nerve or vascular injury always indicates exploration. The risk of misdiagnosis of peripheral nerve is very high. Sympathectomy is a very good treatment for causalgia. External neurosis is beneficial. And there is no place for primary repair or even putting a marker on the end of the nerves. Amputation, traumatic 68%, early surgical 28 and less surgical is 10. Definite place for primary closure whenever you do primary amputation. In bilateral injury, the amputated limb may be useful for the reconstruction of the other. Make use of it. And then the patient should be fully satisfied before you cut his limb. It is a mistake that he recovered from an anesthesia without a limb, and he was not notified. And this is the point of difference between Iraqi-Iranian conflict and Operation Iraqi Freedom. We suffered a lot of force. And uh, then after finishing with fighting with our neighbors, we start fighting with each other. So it is war for the last 30 years. It is the close range of, I'm sorry, close range of shooting, collapse of old houses in Basra as an injurious agent, short evacuation time, more aggressive injury. It is really surprising. Almost all bullet fragments fragmented inside the body. And then more death than injuries, high incidence of amputation, and then more gun shoot injuries and better handling from the staff side. To sum up, the management relies on a prompt and vigorous resuscitation, careful wound inspection, aggressive exploration, liberal debridement, prompt removal of form bodies. Remember the extensive devitalization beyond the wound tract and beyond what looks to you. Okay, and remember antibiotic therapy may supplement 
but never supplant the aggressive and complete surgical removal of necrotic tissue and form body. External fixation is the ideal method. Beware of missing injuries. Look seriously for associated psychological trauma. And there is a small place for primary closure. War surgery is a specialty. A good trauma surgeon is not always a good war surgeon. A crucial factor affecting the incidence of infection is that of the time elapsed before hospitalization and insufficient wound oxygen. Do you remember ligamentous injuries? And here we are, this is what you call tractotomy. Sometimes you need to open the whole tract from entrance to exit so that you take off the norm. This is the external fixation and papinua graft. And this is the typical mine injuries. But beware of this, there is a fracture here due to the shock wave. And this is a bone defect, a very common problem. One hit himself and off with loss of part of the radius. And we treat him by fibular insertion, cancellous bone, and intramedullary fixation. And this is Galicia. Again, internal fixation and bone graft. And this is one of the wonder of the world. This shells is almost three quarter a kilogram, 725. It hits the knee of a miserable patient. And here it is inside the knee. And for the surprise of everybody, there was no vascular or no nerve injury. And we could manage to take it out. There is always surprise in more injuries. And here we are, this is the car which suffered as human beings from missiles. And car repairer got some experience in, in handling the multiple missile for cars. And there is always a black fingers, I would say, behind wars. And the price payers are the miserable children and families. And finally, it is really surprising that Animals can survive in a small place. And here we are, the horse is kissing the sheep, and the dog is nearby, and they are living in this small place. And we, the human beings, in this very wide earth, we cannot survive in harmony and sympathy, and we cannot love each other. So we are waiting from the sky to dream peace on this earth. Thank you very much.